Addition reactions are a type of reaction that unsaturated hydrocarbons undergo, and in most often that occurs in the presence of electrophiles. I want to begin by looking at what are electrophiles. To get there, let's review something we've seen before. If we have chlorine bonded to chlorine and we subject it to UV light, the electrons that are in this bond will move. One will move this way and one will move this way. Hence, I use the single barbed arrow. This is an example of what we call homolytic fission. This will then result in the production of two radicals, two chlorine radicals. So we'll get two of these. Now, if we take HCl, however, and subject it to similar conditions, we get both of the electrons moving towards the chlorine, hence a double barbed arrow. That will then result in the production of hydrogen, which has no electrons, so it will possess a positive charge. And the chlorine, on the other hand, will now have, I'll provide its Lewis formula here, a complete octet of electrons, one more than normal, and a negative charge. This means of splitting is called heterolytic fission. Hetero stands for different, so we have a different splitting versus the same splitting. This produces, as I mentioned, these two species, the hydrogen ion. The hydrogen ion is classified as an electrophile. It's electron deficient. It needs electrons, and it's therefore able to accept a pair from some other substance. Our chlorine, on the other hand, is what we call a nucleophile, and we've seen those before. They're able to donate a pair of electrons. Here's another example of heterolytic fission. This is similar to the one above, except I'm providing a region with a lot of electrons in it, very negative. That's going to cause the electrons in the bond to move. They'll move in this direction. They'll be repelled, making this end slightly negative and this end slightly positive. In this environment, when the electrons leave, they'll both move to this end, repelled by the electron cloud that's nearby. This will then result in the production of chlorine with a positive charge and chlorine with a negative charge. Again, we have a chlorine plus that's willing to accept a pair of electrons and a chlorine minus that's willing to donate a pair. So in this environment, I can induce a halogen to behave by heterolytic fission. What makes a good electrophile? Well, a good electrophile is a substance that essentially has a deficiency of electrons. This deficiency leads to its ability to accept an electron pair. Now, there's two characteristics we can look for. One is if it tends to be a positive ion or a cation. So H plus would be an example of a fairly good electrophile. It would be looking for a pair of electrons. And the nitronium ion, um, which is used a lot in organic chemistry, is also a very good electrophile, again, possessing a positive charge. But we can also generate electron deficiency another way. If we have molecules that can be polarized, for example, my HCl up here at the top. HCl is a polar molecule, with chlorine having a higher electronegativity, is likely to become slightly negative and slightly positive. Thus, when the electrons leave, they tend to move towards the chlorine end of the molecule. As a result, HCl is a fairly good electrophile. So is water, because it can also be polarized. And even halogens, as I've shown here, can be induced to create polar molecules in the presence of an electron cloud. So Cl2, um, Br2, are also examples of substances which could be classified as electrophiles. Let's pause for a moment and take a look at this sample question. 
Using structural formulas show the heterolytic fission of water. Identify the electrophile and the nucleophile. So let's start with our structural formula of the water molecule. In heterolytic fission, both of the electrons in the bond are going to move. And in this case, they'll move to oxygen because it has a greater electronegativity. That's then going to leave the hydrogen deficient in electricities. It would now be um, hydrogen with a positive charge and the remaining OH combination would now possess a negative charge. So my electrophile would be this and our nucleophile would be this. Let's now take a look at the importance of these in addition reactions. So, an unsaturated hydrocarbon is required for these addition reactions. And I can see that that bond there is unsaturated. It's capable of holding more hydrogens. It also is a very high density of electrons. That means we have a lot of electrons crammed into a very, very small space. As a result, a substance liking electrons, an electrophilic substance, would be attracted there. So here I have my electrophile with its slightly positive end and its slightly negative end in this case. And this slightly positive end would be attracted to this high density of electrons. What results then is the following. The double bond is broken, leaving but a single bond. There are my two original hydrogens, this one and this one. And now the hydrogen from the HCl will now accept that electron pair that's present there. They'll move up and join to that hydrogen. The chlorine now will be able to fill in the gap that's created for the second carbon when that double bond leaves. So there's an example of electrophilic addition reaction. So in this case, we have an unsaturated hydrocarbon, an electrophile, and in my example here, a halogenoalkane. So let's look at three different things that we could add. So as I've shown here, we could add a hydrogen halide. So let's say HBr in this case. So there are the original hydrogens. And the H will go to one site and the Br to the other site. We could also add water. Now this reaction also involves a bit of a catalyst. So we employ concentrated sulfuric acid. Again, we get but a single bond in our two hydrogens, I'll put them this way, from our original molecule. And now an H will attach to one of the sites and OH to the other sites. So in this case, I've created an alcohol. And lastly, let's consider we adding strictly a halogen. And in this case, Again, our single bond is created with the two hydrogens, and a bromine would then attach to each one. This is a somewhat important test, because by adding bromine to a substance which has multiple bonds, we get it combining with that substance, and this causes a decolorization of the bromine. Bromine tends to be a brownish liquid. When it then undergoes addition and combines with my unsaturated hydrocarbon, we now have a substance which has no color. This, by the way, is what we call a dihalogenoalkane.
So these are three possible substances I could add to any unsaturated hydrocarbon and they would produce classes of compounds from alcohols to dihalogenoalkanes and my example over here, the halogenoalkane. Let's finish off with a question. Identify the electrophilic addition reaction from the option below. So first of all, electrophilic addition requires the presence of an electrophile. Well, I got those present here, so that doesn't help. If it's an addition reaction, I know I need an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So that means I need something that's got either a carbon-carbon double bond or a carbon-carbon triple bond in it. So if I take a look, for instance, at C, I can see here that's got four bonds because of three here. The carbon here and the carbon here is singly bonded to each other, as is this one. So this substance is not unsaturated, nor is this substance here the same problem. So I'm now left with the last two. Let's draw out the structure. So we have CH3 bonded to CH, bonded to CH, bonded to CH3. So this is where the double bond exists. So when this undergoes addition, what's going to happen is that double bond will break. And an H will go to one site and OH will go to the other site or vice versa. So that's what I'm looking for. The OH is going to attach itself in the middle of the chain, not at the end. So here I can see this OH is attached to a carbon that's at the end of the chain. Here the OH is attached in the middle of the chain. So as a result, I'm going to go with B. So remember, electrophilic additions require the presence of unsaturated hydrocarbons in an electrophile, a substance which is capable of accepting a pair of electrons.